Uh, welcome to the fall workshop training series offered by Pentair. Uh, today's topic is the, the Tuesday product feature of the 5812 valve, and we've paired it in this discussion with the XTR2 controller. Uh, really a very versatile uh, player in the large residential environment and light commercial space with the size of this valve. Um, this valve as for its size plumbing wise is rather compact um, with being 305 millimeters tall and 260 wide um, and uh, 200 millimeters deep on the valve itself. You'll notice almost immediately some differences between it and the um, younger slings in the line of the 58 158.10. You'll notice these two ports here, and we'll get to, to one of the distinct features of this valve and why this is convenient for us. So the 5812 is a valve that actually reaches across tank spectrums. This valve will work on a two and a half inch base or a four inch base in both upflow, downflow, and filter capacities for those tank sizes. So we're literally getting into some larger tank sizes and some real light commercial applications with this product as well. Or some of those larger homes that are where they're running on inch and a half plumbing, um, this will fit into that space as well uh, there. But you have uh, up to 45 gallons per minute uh, in, in nearly 45 gallons per minute in both the two and a half and the four inch approximately 40 gallons per minute in upflow configurations and almost 38 GPM in both filter applications as well. But the nice thing is the large backwash flow rate with this valve that allows you to use some of those heavy filter medias in um, pH management situations or in iron uh, removal applications as well. So good, good, uh, coverage range uh, for medias in tanks. Uh, you have upflow and downflow uh, available with this uh, valve as well. It has an inch and a half drain line connection that can be reduced down to uh, inch and a quarter, depending on assembly. Uh, you have the uh, 1610 uh, brine system with the 1610 uh, 3 8 inch uh, brine line uh, attachment for this valve as well. So you have the same uh, looks available across the spectrum of this family. You can get the blue or black bezel that will snap into this cover, or you can get the environmental cover for this valve as well. So you have some customization of the look if you need it. Um, the entire family has um, an international configurable transformer where you can change the type of plug that interfaces with the transformer with a three meter cord here. And you also have it available in 120 volts as well. And as we've seen in the last to presentation, the entire family of 5,800 valves works off of the same snap together fit platform. What we're really changing here with this platform is the piston and the valve body underneath it. This pretty much remains uniform throughout the line. So you can have multiple interchangeable parts uh, up here on the power head that drives the piston where you start getting variance is in the pistons and the valve bodies themselves. And these lines, you know, the 58, 10, and 12 use the same injector. So if you're selling a series of valves, this will help reduce part stocking as well if you're um, using this in your uh, service business. Uh, you have a quick to remove uh, motor here that pops in and out that has the cord attached for the attachment for the optical sensor so you're not using as many parts. 
Uh, it snaps all of our controllers going forward. Uh, will nest into whatever platform it is. We have this cradle and nesting design for the control interface to snap into various platforms. So if you wanted to upgrade uh, old LXTs or SXTs in the field with an XTR2, you can just snap it to fit and the connections will all plug and play. Uh, you have an optical sensor for determining uh, position of uh, the piston during operation. That gives us a lot of diagnostic capabilities as well. And something that's really profound on this platform is the 12 volt DC motor. It's fast moving from one position to the next. Yes, this does make this valve a little bit louder uh, than other valves, but that quick piston change in position allows us to do a lot more in the same time frame keeping that regeneration cycle shorter as short as possible. Um, but it also gives us the ability to drive the piston in both directions, forward and back. So we're able to have fully customizable programming with the XTR2, up to 21 different cycle steps you could incorporate here if you really needed to address some complex um, installations or management situations. Uh, you have a harness that's included, fewer parts stay to travel around with the motor, fewer loose connections or vibrational issues with a permanently wired device. You have the uh, a drop in, you know, drop and fits one single stack cartridge in this unit. It uses the 2510 seals um, that have been, you know, reliable and proven throughout the market for a lot of years, and it just drops into the valve body, making this a rather easy swap out. The um, brine line flow controls are the very similar quick connect features that pop into the side of the valve with your control buttons. Uh, and the drain line flow control here is organized the same way with a button adapter here as well. So you can get a very broad spectrum of backwash flow characteristics out of this same valve uh, if you're going in between two and a half inch and four inch tanks. So you have a, a adjustability to your tanks and media as well. And then there's the unique feature with the 5812 Valve. This is the only valve that we have this feature on. You have the ability to convert the valve rather than the piston from no hard water bypass to hard water bypass. If you have, you have two ports here, A and B, if the plug is inserted in B, you have a no hard water bypass valve. If you move the plug to A, you now have a hard water bypass valve. Why is that important? Well, in applications where you can't slow down water flow, but you need to regenerate the filter or, or the um, softener, this is where you are going to use the um, hard water bypass. So during regeneration, it's gonna bypass water. That's for applications where it's not critical to have soft water all the time. If you need soft water all the time, you're gonna put the plug in the B position and have no hard water bypass. So what's gonna happen here is no water is gonna go downstream for service during regeneration. So you need to make sure your time for regeneration is appropriate. And if you notice, these plugs are, are kind of familiar to you if you know any of our other products. These are the same caps and O-rings that's on the Auto Troll series with the same torque head tool that fits into these spots as well. So um, lots of versatility here in this valve without having to swap out a piston. That's a great feature to go back and forth, or it's a good way to find a, a solution to a problem just by popping a cap and switching a plug. The unit uses the same 1610 injectors assembly. Sorry for the blurry writing here. It just didn't uh, translate well to a PowerPoint presentation, but all these same injectors are used on the 5810 as well. And you can see here, you have DF 
for downflow and UF for upflow. You can convert this valve by switching these two and changing out the piston. For upflow to downflow conversions, you still need to change the piston out, uh, but you won't have to manage the hard water bypass issue with a piston. You have a screen here that pops in and out for um, particle protection of the injector, because the water is going to come up in through here and then out through this injector and when it flows through. So uh, understand this is the screen for the injector system as well. So you have the XTR2, which is available on the entire product line. Uh, you have capacitive touch screen, which just wakes up at the touch of a finger. Um, advanced programmability features uh, with weekly reserve and variable reserve. Uh, you have regeneration type other, which gives you full control over the regeneration steps of 22, 21 cycles for low filling wells, for different injection methods, for various other applications. Uh, if you have a complex water treatment issue, you might need all these steps to allow for pauses and steps to happen in or, you know, between a normal regeneration cycle. Uh, you have two programmable auxiliary relays that are both normally open or closed, so you can select which one that are fully programmable for which uh, function, service, or uh, any place in the regeneration cycle that you wish to program those relays for. Uh, this is for chemical feed pumps, shutting off RO systems. Uh, if this is pretreatment for an RO, if there are um, other things like UV lights, things you want to turn down, turn off during regeneration so they don't overheat, things like that can be um, turned on and off with this as well. If you just wanted to turn on a strobe light that lets you know that the thing was regenerating, you could too. So it's just one of those features. We have programmable switches that you can put electronic devices on for whatever feature you'd like to program. Um, it is usable with the field programmer using a field uh, USB connection with a USB mini connector. You can use a laptop to push a stored program into a valve. This is very useful for OEM manufacturing as well. If they have stock programs or a list of programs for different markets, they can just push that into a valve without programming all the steps. Um, you get six weeks of diagnostic data out of this unit as well. So tons of information with a very usable screen interface. You have the home screen. And what's nice about this is you can use this as a time clock. You get your date and time. You can enter that here just by touching the screen. Don't even have to go through a menu to access changing date and time. It will show you what, how many days are left until the next backwash if you're going or regeneration if you are doing a time clock version. If you're doing metered, you will have the number of gallons left before regeneration. You have a very intuitive screen that will follow along with the treatment cycle as it steps through, allowing a customer to really understand. There's no abbreviations here. You can communicate out uh, all this stuff very easily over the phone. Uh, you have tons of features at the fingertip on the front screen. Uh, vacation mode, you can put the assist, your program, your assistance name into this unit and just tap it there, your diagnostics, your settings changes, and your regeneration button here as well. Uh, if the unit's not being touched for five minutes, the screen will go black with a bouncing, uh, basically with a date and time and amount of gallons left till regeneration or day till regeneration will hop around the screen as a screensaver. So you can enter in your assistance name and number. So if you're the installer or the service company for this unit, enter in your name and phone number so they can access your number at a finger, uh, you know, a touch of a finger in the unit. And you can program an assistance interval that will kick out an error code uh, on the unit. This would be fantastic for driving PM schedules within your business. I'm a big fan of PMing water treatment equipment rather than waiting for it to fail. Uh, you can do this to coincide with filter replacements uh, that may be ahead of this equipment or brine tank cleanings or just that PM, check out, check out my valve, make sure it's working. 
on whatever cadence works for your marketplace. Um, this can be timed in number of months or number of regeneration or backwash cycles, depending on how you wish to approach that. You can set the time of day just by tapping the date and time. And if you change the month and year, it will automatically update the day of the week. So if you put in the right date here, this will automatically update. So there's not redundant steps here. It's a smart calendar here. Uh, very easy to a program. And everything with this controller, if you, you need to hit the check mark, which is the enter button, if you do not hit this check, Nothing gets entered into the valve or the program. You have a super capacitor it takes a, a, that will back up power for up to eight hours after a power outage with this unit. I know we're darned if we do and darned if we don't with batteries versus super capacitors. Batteries don't get changed, and when they fail is when you need them. Super capacitors have a limited capacity of backup and reserve power eight hours. Well, if your power's out for longer than eight hours, your, your water softener is probably not your greatest concern. Um, it's just going to be a detail to check off later. So vacation mode. Vacation mode's a really interesting feature for um, those that have uh, multiple properties or go on vacation regularly. Um, and when you hit this button, the homeowner, uh, we able to leave town, hit the button, vacation mode, the unit will not regenerate until it senses 150 gallons has gone through the softener and then it will regenerate that evening. So there's peace of mind that there's not going to be water use when they're gone and all they have to do is hit a button and it will come back on without them even thinking about it. So that chaos after coming back from a trip don't even have to worry about managing the software. You did that before you left. You have simple rules for diag diagnostics. You can get into the diagnostic menu by hitting uh, the sheet button or the checklist up here. They'll bring up your flow rates, be able to go through all this data and just hit home to get home. Can be easily navigated with the homeowner over the phone if you need to. So very, very simple screens to use. And you get lots of information will come out of this. This is just a printout from the, uh, the manual, but you'll be able to get all this information, flow rate, peak flow rate, totalizer, last regen, reserve, what that's programmed to be, number of regens the system has gone through since the last reset, how often it's going through those regenerations, daily water use, usage since the last regeneration, and last settings change. That's my favorite from a service perspective. It helps eliminate, well, essentially eliminates the uh, uh, the finger pointing over someone playing with their buttons. Because I know in my somebody like you know nobody lives here and nobody did it, but um, you know things get changed all the time. So this helps you bill when you normally would might not be able to. You can initiate a uh, regeneration just by holding the regeneration button on the first screen. And it'll bring up now or at regeneration time programmed in, select whichever is appropriate for you. If you're troubleshooting steps going through it, you can just cycle through by hitting the error button in, and it will skip through. Wait till the motor finishes, stops running and changing piston position before hitting this again. It just make sure you don't skip a position by double tapping a button okay so just advance through and then hit x to cancel there are two levels of programming in the xtr2 you get the programming by hitting the gear button to get in the inner works of the unit you have settings day override regen time hardness and any changes you make you must hit the enter button which is the check and then press X to return to the home screen. So you can set all sorts of things here. You can get into the master programming by hitting the gear button in the settings page. And that will get you into this um, screen. It'll ask you, that, do you really know what you're doing and should you be in here? Uh, sort of question. And then you need the code 
to get into this unit and uh, get into the master programming. Uh, and this helps limit unwanted changes. But that last settings change um, is in there for those uh, curious customers who find the code out somehow. Uh, master settings, be able to change you know, the format, language, units, and assistance information. Uh, you go into the valve, you can change the system type, the valve type, and regeneration type there. So you can, uh, you know, system four, uh, standalone valve, uh, 5,800, 10, or 12, uh, upflow, downflow, or filter uh, will be acceptable there. Regen flow, uh, this will be upflow or downflow. Relays, aux one or aux two, lots of programmability there. Meter type, depends on the type of meter you're using. Settings review of all the settings and remote regen, you have the ability to uh, select that operation as well. One of the things I like about this unit is if you do a custom program, you can save it as a non-factory setting, and then you can go out and reset to the non-factory default. That would be that program you entered in initially. Uh, or you can reset it to factory settings and reprogram the valve if you wish to do that. Uh, you have the ability to do remote lockout and start remote start if you're dealing in the, in the commercial space. If you need to have some remote ability here, you can do that. You can lock the unit out um, if you want to during a certain time frame where you can't afford to have the unit in regeneration, either due to pressure drop or the need for soft water or treated water. You could also use this to initiate a regeneration uh, if somebody had a, you know, a smart home panel where their unit was wired up to, they could control that from there. Um, you can manage this um, remote regen with a signal duration that can is adjustable uh for various lengths of time depending on the control system or plc this is hooked up to so lots of variabilities even for sophisticated smaller uh applications with this controller you have auxiliary relays like we talked about here you have the common normally opened or normally closed on each relay so you can pick the variability um just had this question come in from Latin America this morning uh, about doing separate source backwashing because or regeneration because the source water is uh, questionable enough that they don't even want to use it for regeneration. So how do you go about doing that? You could use um, a normally opened and a normally closed relay to shut off the incoming water supply, the raw water to a softener and have it use a smaller softener just for regeneration. Um, that can be done. Typically that's done in larger applications, but you could do this with the XTR2 and a smaller, uh, probably cabinet style softener just to manage uh, the regeneration. So lots of things that can be done there. This could also manage chemical feed pumps for any one of those 21 uh, programmable steps uh, or shut off road systems or pumps uh, anything you wish to turn off during a regeneration so that you're not starving it for water or impacting it with treatment so how do they, how can those be programmed they can be programmed by cycle uh, basis which is what specific step in the regeneration cycle or in service if you wanted to feed Chlorine only during service, you could do that. And then during regeneration, it would stop. That's how one of these relays can work. Uh, very, very simple to do that with. Uh, Time-based, it'll you know, turn off and on up to two specific start and end times. So if you only wanted to feed chlorine to, let's say, a brine tank to sanitize the resin in biologically suspect source waters, you could feed dosage doses to the brine tank right before um, brine refill or right before brine draw. Um, you could do that with resin cleaners and things like that if you wanted to automate that process for your customer. Uh, Volume-based, 
you know, for every amount of water that goes through the valve, you want to do this sort of application or treatment that could be used if you were dealing with a storage tank um, after an, an RO, if you wanted to dose some chlorine into a storage tank, you could say at, at, after X number of many gallons of water goes through the softener, I want you to put X number of milliliters of uh, run for this amount of time pump to put this amount of chlorine into stored RO production water, things like that. Uh, alarm based, you could have it turn on when an alarm condition is met. Uh, let's say um, if you had a failed regeneration or overran um, the capacity, you could shut down that RO or you could send out an alarm and light a light bulb saying, hey, you know, watch out, we may have issues here. So lots of things you can do, be creative with these features if you use them. Here's some examples, alarm-based, volume-based, and time-based for solenoids. If you do have external solenoids, they are going to need to be powered from an external source. You're not typically getting power from our boards for this application. So all of these valves are able to bed lift and backwash any softening resin on the market and heavy medias like quartzite and calcite on the two and a half inch tanks. Once you get up into the four inch tanks, that's where calcite might be and quartzite might be problematic due to their weight, uh, but that's gonna be above four cubic feet of media. So a lot of this stuff is eliminated by proper sizing. Uh, but beware if you're going up to the four, uh, you know, the four inch size threaded tanks, you want to make sure the valve can do the backwash full rate associated for that media and get the bed lift you need. Um, that's always critical to the application of any uh, packed column in a tank that you're using for uh, ion exchange or filtration. Got to get that stuff backwashed properly. So, uh, if you want to go into a deeper dive into the pairing of XTR2 with 5812 valves, uh, feel free to reach out uh, and have a training request. Go into training.request at pentair.com. And anything Pentair in the Fleck, Auto Troll, Structural Tanks, Pentec, uh, or Residential RO uh, System Space. Feel free to reach out and set up uh, a time to talk. Or if you just want to talk shop about an application uh, or give us feedback about what you love and what you hate about our products, we really want to know. Um, and this venue gives us a, an opportunity to go directly to our managers and engineers and, and skip the sales chain if you need to. So feel free to drop us a line and let us know at training.request at pentair.com.